Ladies and gentlemen, we have detected gravitational waves. We did it. Gravitational waves were predicted by Einstein uh, about 100 years ago, and they are dynamical perturbations in the fabric of space-time, ripples in space-time, if you will. The gravitational wave stretches space in one direction and compresses space in the other direction. Nobody really believed that you could ever detect them because the size of the effect is so small. I came to the conclusion that, yeah, if you made this long enough... Nobody had ever made something like this before, so there was a lot of technological challenges that needed to be overcome. That's what scientific discovery is really all about. You don't choose the simple things to do. We have done something which is brand new. The field has busted wide open. It's monumental. <laughs> it's like Galileo using the telescope for the first time. I looked at it and I thought, my God, uh, this, this looks like it's it. But I do want to say something else. This, this is not just about the detection of gravitational waves. That's the story today. But what's really exciting is what comes next. Right, it's 400 years ago, Galileo turned a telescope to the sky and opened the era of modern observational astronomy. I think we're doing something equally important here today. I think we're opening a window on the universe, the window of gravitational wave astronomy. And you're looking at the stars behind them. By the way, this is not a Hollywood production that I'm going to show you. It is actually a real computer simulation solving Einstein's equations for, for these merging black holes. So this is really what it would look like if you were in a spaceship close up. And I will also point out that the, the movie I'm showing is vastly slowed down relative to what happened here. So let me start it. All right, you can see that as the black holes spin around each other, all right, the stars behind them are warped, and that's because the strong gravitational fields bend the light that comes around. But what I want you to pay attention to in this video is the fact that as they orbit, the black holes are getting closer and closer to one another. The orbit is speeding up, and eventually they're going to merge. The, the event horizons are going to join, boom. They produce one big black hole, which relaxes, and you see a little bit of vibration there, and it becomes two smaller black holes die, one bigger black hole is born. Now, what's really amazing about this is this is the first time that this kind of a system has ever been seen, a binary black hole merger. And it's proof that binary black holes exist in the universe. So I want to put this in perspective for you because I think it's very important all right, to give a sense of what really happened here. So each of these black holes are about 150 kilometers in diameter, a little bit bigger than that. Take something that's 150 kilometers in diameter, so that's about a little bit bigger, maybe a lot bigger than the metropolitan Washington, D.C. area. Pack 30 times the mass of the sun in that. Accelerate it to about half the speed of light. Now take another thing, 30 times the mass of the sun, accelerate it half the speed of light and collide them together. That's what we saw here. Talk about the gravitational waves. You didn't see any gravitational waves there. What you saw was actually the black holes. Now let me look at this from the, uh, the gravitational wave perspective. So you're going to see, again, a computer simulation. This is a real simulation using Einstein's equations. Uh, you see the two black holes. And the green that you see are the gravitational waves that are produced as the black holes orbit around one another. Their orbit decays and they merge together. All right. So they're spinning around. You see the, the, they're getting closer and closer together. As they get closer and closer together, more gravitational waves, they merge, and there's this burst of gravitational waves that travels for 1.3 billion years. It passes through everything. It goes right through matter, right through stars, and it eventually gets to the Earth. All right? And when it gets to the Earth, the gravitational wave passes, and what it's going to do is stretch and compress space as these waves pass. And you'll see that the Earth is jiggling like jello. I, wanted, I, don't, I don't want people to be scared here. The Earth doesn't really do this. This effect is greatly, greatly exaggerated, but it gives you the effect. And then we zoom in, 
And how we detect these are using the interferometer that's, that's in LIGO. And Ray Weiss is going to tell you more about the interferometer. I just want to say one thing, that, that the effect that we're trying to measure from these violent, you know, these big black holes colliding each other at half the speed of light, all right, is so tiny that it takes something like LIGO to measure, to measure it. We are, try, we are trying to measure things basically at 1 1,000th the diameter of a proton. That's the size of the signal that you see on Earth from those events that take place 1.3 billion uh, years uh, away. All right, let me put that in perspective because I think those kinds of numbers are hard to get your head around. All right, if we were trying to measure the distance between the sun and the nearest star, which is about three and a quarter light years away, LIGO would, is c capable of measuring that, if it could do that, to a level of about the width of a human hair. So the width of a human hair over three and, three and a quarter light years. That, that's remarkable precision. And we have been analyzing data from two detectors in Hanford, Washington, and Livingston, Louisiana. LIGO built two detectors because we are measuring these tiny distortions of space-time here on Earth that you can only believe they're real if you see them both at the same time on places that are far apart. That's the only way to be sure that these are not local disturbances and they are coming from astrophysical sources. These detectors are L-shaped. This is the LIGO Livingstone detector. They are four kilometers long on each side. That's the Hanford detector. And we have lasers that go back and forth between mirrors to measure the distance between those mirrors. And gravitational waves would distort the space-time and would be measured as distortions in that distance of four kilometers. Again, it takes a lot of people to do this. So this is it. This is what we saw. September 14 last year, we saw this signal in Livingston, Louisiana. That is a measure, that's a waveform that we saw. The units are strain, that's a distortion of space-time, and you can see a peak value the largest value of this waveform was a part in 10 to the 21. For four kilometers, that's a tiny, tiny fraction of a proton diameter. That's incredibly tiny. But this signal is seen, you can see it even by eye, above the ever-present rumbling noise that we have in the detector. But we know it's real because seven milliseconds later, we saw the same thing in the Hanford detector. This is it. That's how we know we have gravitational waves. But we know a lot more than that. You can see that these signals have oscillations that grow in frequency and amplitude and then settle down. And that's exactly the prediction that we know from solving Einstein's equations on computers for the coalescence of two black holes settling into, merging into a larger black hole and settling down. And the coincidence is remarkable. You can see here overlaid the template that we used or the numerical relativity simulation that, that was done for, these, uh, for the coalescence of these black holes. That's how we know not only that we detected gravitational waves, but these waves were, were produced by the coalescence of black holes. So, these are the fantastic news we are telling you about. Now, from this waveform, you can tell a lot more. You can tell from the frequency the masses of the initial black holes. They had 29 and 36 solar masses. We, from the fitting to the numerical relativity waveform, we can tell that when they merged, they formed a larger black hole, but not with the sum of the two masses, with only 62 solar masses. And that's because there were three solar masses emitted in energy, in gravitational waves. That's a huge amount of energy. And we can tell all of that from this tiny fraction of a second in the waveform. We can even tell more than that. From the amplitude of the waveform, you can tell how far away this system was. It was more than a billion light years away. This merger happened 1.3 billion years ago, when multicellular life here on Earth 
was just beginning to spread. <laughs> and the signal took a billion years to come to Earth and produce this tiny distortion in our detectors that we are very proud to measure. This is the signal we have measured. We can even tell more. Because we have two detectors, it's like having two ears, we can localize the signal. Not very well with, two, with only two ears, but we can tell it came from the southern sky in the rough direction of the Magellanic cloud. And, and we could have a broad area, a broad uncertainty area for the region. Of course, the point, the source is, is a very point-like source. I mean, the merger happened in a small region, but we cannot tell exactly where it happened because we only had two detectors. And what you'll see in the, see this round cylinder there, that's a laser. It's a make-believe laser. Then there's, uh, there's a beam splitter, which is that thing, which is a thin little thing in the middle. Then there are two mirrors, which have those black aspects, one to the left, one to the right. And then a make-believe detector, which is that rectangular thing. And now let me turn this animation on. And what we do is we fire light from the laser into the system. Now this is the electric field in the light. The color is the intensity of the light. So you'll see where the color tells you where the light is. But the electric field is indexed by the different colors of the field. And you'll notice the way this was set up is that right now there is no light at the photodetector. That's the trap you've set for the, for the gravitational wave. And now people begin to wiggle in the animation, the end mirrors. And you'll notice light appears, disappears at the photodetector. That tiny motion and that fact, that light, the amount of light that goes to the photodetector is proportional to that strain in the gravitational wave. That's the method of the detection. And so here I'm going to show you a video that describes at the very bottom, it's not very bright, but at the very bottom is the gravitational waveform that was seen cleaned of all of its noise. And it agrees beautifully with the gravitational waveform predicted by the simulations. And by seeing which simulation agrees in gravitational waveform, we can then go in and look at the computer simulation and deduce what I show you for the storm in the middle of the screen. And time is shown in the upper left of the screen, the flow of time. Now, the uh, shape of space I show to you by imagining that we are living in a higher dimensional universe looking in on our universe. I take away one of the three dimensions from our universe so it looks like a surface, a two-dimensional surface. And the, uh, the flow of time, uh, oh, and then I should say that the funnels that you see in there represent the warping of space around the black hole. The flow of time is represented by the colors. In the green region near the center, time is flowing at its normal rate. In the yellow regions, it's slowed by 20 to 30 percent. And in the red regions, it's tremendously slowed. The silver arrows describe the motion of space. It's dragged into motion by the spins and the gravity and the movement, the orbital movement of the black holes. And then the motion of space causes the orbit to precess, as you saw. I'm pausing the movement now to watch the onset of the collision. You're going to see in slow motion the growth of the warping. I'm going to pause it, stop it here for a moment, and you can see the extreme warping, and then we see it oscillate and settle down finally into a single black hole. A new black hole has been born. Far away, in purple and blue, we see the gravitational waves propagating toward Earth, carrying the news of the collision. <laughs> 